That man or woman ain't got to be your friend to raise their child. And some of you guys are using your child as a pawn to keep this emotional hold over somebody that don't want to be in your life romantically no more. You keep calling, talking about, well, it's for the child. You ain't calling for the child. You're using that child as an excuse to continue a conversation with a person that you know don't want to talk to you past the child. We not friends no more. We are co-parents. When we were in a relationship, I didn't forget how you treated me. I didn't forget how you were toxic and abusive and how you cheated on me. I didn't forget none of that. But because we have a child together, you are in my life and in that child's life for the next 18 years. And out of respect for that, I'm going to be respectful towards you. When I see you, there ain't going to be no outward beef. That don't mean I forgot how I felt when you cheated on me. That don't mean I forgot how it felt when you put your hands on me. But because we have a child, I will be respectful towards you, even though there's no other reason for me to do so besides the fact that I love my child. How the fuck do you co-parent with a narcissist? Allow me to answer this question for you. A narcissist wants a reaction. It doesn't matter whether it's a positive or a negative reaction. They just want attention. They know how to set you off and they know how to hurt you. So they're going to do everything they can to do exactly that. A narcissist loves to set you off and hurt you. That's what gives them their fuel, their fire, their everything. It's just what they thrive on. It's the conflict that they thrive on. The answer seems impossible. The answer is as complex as it is simple. You have to go no contact as much as possible. Co-parenting doesn't involve you guys talking every single day. There's nothing that you guys need to talk about if you're both doing what you should be doing with the child. If you are co-parenting, then you must trust that the other parent is going to do what they have to do because you have no other control otherwise. Keep in mind, until you get full custody of your child, you must keep all reactions to a minimum. That's their main goal, to make you look crazy. It's all a part of what is called a smear campaign. I'll do another video on that soon. More or less, it's to make you look like the villain and them look like the victim. This is how they get their new targets to trust them and believe that they are the hurt ones. The intention is to set you off. It is to hurt you. It is to anger you. It's the ultimate test of your strength. They want you to react so that they can say, see, see how crazy they are? I told you. Narcissists are very good shit talkers. They will talk the most shit. They will make you in the world think that they're this high person, this great person, this beautiful, amazing person. When in reality, they're not worth shit. If you have kids with them, co-parenting with them is hell. It gets to a point where you feel like, do I even need you? Because at this point, I feel we can do a lot better without you. Mentally, it's even easier because we don't have to worry about you because narcissists don't know how to be parents. If they don't know how to be a partner, how are they going to know how to be a parent? They're so selfish. Everything is about them. When they become a parent, they don't put their kids in their priorities first. You may notice that they're putting other people ahead of their kids. They're putting other things ahead of their kids. Anything else gets first priority. So if they have plans with your kids, those plans will get canceled for somebody else. Why? Because they are pieces of shit. What's it like when you have to co-parent after divorce with a narcissist? Whoa, one of the most challenging things from what we've seen. And the best pieces of advice that we can give is number one, keep it short, keep it simple, keep it non-emotional and have it written because he or she otherwise is going to try and gaslight you and inflame you. I mean, the narcissist is not going to change just because you're now divorced. And so the more drama that you allow them to conduct, the worse it's going to be. And remember, at the end of the day, you do both share in these children and the most important thing is the children. What does a narcissist do when you end the relationship and you guys have children together? Since they no longer have direct access to control you, they are going to use your child to manipulate you, to control you, to abuse you. Some narcissists will straight up try to turn your child against you by telling them that you broke up the family. They'll try to gaslight your child and plant these seeds in your child's head about you, and your child may come to you repeating those same words that they planted in their head. Some narcissists will use your child as a way to overstep your boundaries and continue to communicate with you, especially in situations when there's no custody agreement in place and no parenting app that you guys use. They'll blow up your phone, FaceTime you repeatedly throughout the day, acting like they care about your child so much when really it's just a way to get through to you. Some narcissists might convince you that it's best if the two of you hang out with your child together as a way to hoover you because you start feeling like a little family again. Some narcissists will bring your child around the new supply so that your child goes back and tells you what they're 
they're doing with the new supply. So you start self gaslighting, thinking they're treating the new supply better. What else? The narcissist that you are trying to co-parent with is intentionally trying to make your life harder. And of course, if you knew her, I'm a narcissist, acts like narcissistic personality disorder. A lot of people ask me, like, how do I co-parent with a narcissist more effectively? From the mind of a narcissist, I'm not trying to co-parent with you effectively. I'm not trying to make your life easy at all. I'm gonna show up late. I'm gonna come, look, I'm gonna, I'm, not, I'm gonna not show up at all. I'm gonna change the plans up last minute just so your day is ruined and things like that. You cannot co-parent with someone that is not trying to be cooperative with you. Someone that is not trying to co-exist with you. Co means more than one, y'all. Especially if you are the one that discarded the narcissist or you broke up with them, they have this to have so much resentment and anger stored up towards you that they're going to try to, to, to use the kids as leverage to try to hurt you. Narcissistic people are typically trying to counter parent you. Like whatever goes in your house, we're going to do the exact opposite in my house just because I, I know what you do works, but I'm going to do different over here just so the kids can come home and want to be with me more. You get a lot of narcissistic people who do this intentionally to try to ruin your day. So my advice is pick up points, drop off points, like have a backup plan, y'all. Always have that backup plan in place because that narcissistic person is gonna try to ruin your day. You're like, okay, I be here. make sure you be here at seven o'clock, okay? I have somewhere to be at seven o'clock. It's 8.30, they haven't showed up yet. And they, if you call them, they'll get angry at you and rage out on you. Don't rush me, I'm on the way right now, damn. See, that's why we're not together. Because you act like this. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Blah, blah, blah. Boo, boo, boo. Beep, beep, beep. So I typically tell people to look up parallel parenting because parallel parenting can help you just have peace of mind sometimes, y'all. Because it, it is very tough dynamic dealing with a narcissistic co-parent. Anyways, for longer videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel at Mental Illness. Thank you. If you're co-parenting with a narcissist, this is for you. Let me tell you, it ain't easy. Narcissistic parents are all about themselves. They don't care about their kids' needs or feelings. They can be controlling, neglectful, and emotionally abusive. Having a narcissistic parent has a huge impact on a child's development. The child might struggle with low self-esteem, anxiety, depression. They might also have difficulty forming healthy relationships and trusting others. Narcissistic parents are usually unable to empathize with their children's emotions and experiences, and that leads them to dismiss or minimize the child's feelings. Their parenting is inconsistent at best. They may lavish with attention and praise at one time, and then others just neglect and criticize. That obviously has a hugely negative impact on how kids see themselves and develop self-worth. But it doesn't have to be this way because there are things that you can do to protect your kids from the really damaging effects of narcissistic parenting. And that's why I'm hosting this webinar called Emotionally Bulletproof Kids, How to Raise Strong and Confident Kids Amongst Chaos. In this webinar, the expert panel is going to share practical strategies for helping your kids build resilience, emotional intelligence, so they can thrive despite the challenges of having a narcissistic parent. So if you're a parent or a caregiver and you want to help your kids overcome the impact of neglectful, absent, inconsistent parenting, be sure to pre-register for the upcoming webinar in the link in my bio. Stronger than How do you co-parent with a narcissist? But here's the thing, you can't co-parent with a narcissist because they don't co-parent, they counter-parent. So what do I mean by counter-parent? Okay, ladies, if you're trying to co-parent with an abusive narcissist um, and you have your children most of the time, okay, you're taking care of them, taking them to school, and let's just say he, he picks them up on the weekends. For the most part, you have taught your children certain rules, regulations, guidelines. You're raising them up the right way. But when they go on those visits with that abusive, narcissistic baby daddy, he's deliberately going to um, undo all of your parenting. All the things you taught your children, he's going to go against it. He will spoil the children. He will allow the children to misbehave. Um he will talk about you negatively in front of them and not only that his his people his mama his sister they're going to teach your children bad behaviors too they're going to turn your children into miniature narcissists all of that is done to spite you and then they're going to send the children back home to you with behavioral problems 
all of that is strategic all of it is calculated premeditated um, the goal is to turn the children against you very gradually as they get older because he's pissed off that you don't want him anymore you won't sleep with him he knows you can't stand his ass so the only way that he can punish you bully you or whatever is to turn the children against you undo your parenting um, turn them into miniature narcissists um, don't agree to therapy your children got any type of developmental disabilities ADHD autism whatever he's gonna be against all of that and his toxic mama and sister they're gonna help him and he's gonna have his side chick or his toxic ass girlfriend babysitting your children because he doesn't want to be responsible he's gonna dump them off on somebody else so if you really want to know what the key is to co-parenting with an abusive narcissist is you have to build a case against him and turn it into a domestic violence case now this is based on my experience i destroyed my baby father in court like i was a pit bull and i did it without an attorney ladies you're going to have to turn it into a domestic violence case you're, meaning you're gonna have to build a constant paper trail of police reports until you obtain a restraining order then when you get the restraining order you can file an emergency modification to turn the visitation into supervised visits then you need to file for 100 percent sole custody you set your baby father up every time he breaks the schedule he pops up to your house unannounced um, he keeps the kids out later he, he's not going by that schedule you are to file a police report and create a paper trail until you turn into a domestic violence I co-parent with a narcissist he moved on right after we broke up but because I moved on I'm a hoe I co-parent with a narcissist of course because he pays me child support he doesn't have to do anything else I co-parent with a narcissist he's gonna threaten to take me to court even though I have to beg him to take his son for at least a night a week I co-parent with a narcissist. Obviously, he's going to use his new supply and try and make me jealous. I co-parent with a narcissist. He's going to refuse to take his son so that I can't go out and enjoy my life even though he gets to go out any single night he wants to. I co-parent with a narcissist. He's going to tell people I keep his kid away from him even though I have folders of screenshots asking him to just take his son. I co-parent with a narcissist. He lost access to me, so my son loses access to his father. I co-parent with a narcissist. Of course, his wants and needs come before my child's wants and needs. I just wanted to let you know that I'm going out of state for a week with the kids and we're taking the usual trip to my brother's house. The fuck you are. You're not going anywhere with my kids. If you do that, I will call the police and have you arrested for kidnapping. Uh-huh. Well, I'm actually allowed to take the kids out of state on my parenting time and I'm just letting you know. So yeah, we're going. Thanks. Yeah? Is that what you think? You think you can fucking go? I don't think so. Guess what? You're on the no-fly list. Good luck traveling like that. No-fly list? Ah, well, I'm sure they'll let me know that at the airport. You know what's really disturbing? Is having a child with a narcissist. Because they will make up every excuse every lie to not be a parent they could have a relationship with their friends with their family and their new supply but they won't ever be a parent to that child disturbing on so many levels when you have children with a narcissist or a sociopath, you realize that you can never be free. You will be tied to them forever. You will constantly worry about the influences that they have on your children. You will worry whether your own children will turn out to be narcissists and sociopaths themselves. You will have to deal with your children's disappointments and upsets, whether the narcissist shows up, shows up late, forgets birthdays and special occasions. If they have visitation rights, well, they get to take your children out, show off, buy them stuff. When you are always picking up the pieces, you will always be the bad guy, you know, um, telling them to tidy up their room and pick up after them and do their homework, whereby the narcissist or the sociopath can appear glamorous in your children's eyes. 
You have to bite your tongue constantly. But I want to tell you this. Only 1% of the population turn out to be sociopaths and narcissists. So you win. The narcissists and the sociopaths are in it for the short haul. If they don't get their narcissistic and sociopathic supply, they're off. You're in it for the long haul, so you win. And narcissism and sociopathic tendencies are not hereditary. They don't even have to run in families, so you win. A narcissist will never co-parent with you. They will counter-parent. They don't care about the emotional damage that the constant drama inflicts upon the children. As long as it causes emotional drama for you. So I'm going to tell you how a lawyer, a mediator, or a judge, or a gal can really tell the difference between a narcissistic parent and the parent that's actually out for the well-being of the child. Coming in heavy with number one, the narcissistic parent. Man, oh man, if you would ever sit in a courtroom, you would be able to pick out the narcissistic parent like that. That narcissistic parent will literally go right into the courtroom and put all blame on the other parent. When that narcissistic parent comes into a courtroom, it is very rarely addressed about the child. It is more so pointing fingers at the other parent. The parent does this. The parent acts like this. The child's the way she is because of this parent. And this parent parents like this. And it's automatic degrading, false accusations, um, very false allegations against the parent. And it's very rarely even about the child. It's just about the parent. Well, that parent did this. Our child's this way because that parent parents like this. This kid is in therapy because of that parent. And it's automatic full blame on the other parent. Red flag. These type of parents literally throw themselves under the bus the second they open their mouth. Then coming in number two, you got the parent that's actually out for the well-being of the child. That parent is very calm, collected, and they very rarely have anything negative to say about the other parent. This parent will sit there and be like, well, I think our child should have this. I think our child should benefit from this change. I think our child could use some more of this or some more of that. I wanna do this for our child. Every idea they place on the table or every statement they place on the table is literally about the child. You don't hear them going, Oh, well, I didn't do that. This, this parent did that. They're not fighting back with the narcissistic parent. They're just sitting and being like blocking them out and just full on worrying about their child. Not only do judges and everybody else in the legal field can point these things out, you can point these things out too. If you would just sit back and watch, like if you're a step parent like myself, you can sit back and like observe both, both players. You will be able to see with your naked eye on who's the parent that's doing the manipulation, who's out to hurt the other parent, and then you can see who the parent is that actually cares for the child. It is black and white. If you have children with a narcissist, it will be your worst nightmare because until your child is older, you will be tied to them. You will try to teach your child empathy and boundaries, but the narcissist will go against your will, against everything you do. Children do not like boundaries, but will be drawn to your abusive spouse because they let them do whatever they want. They will buy them lavish gifts and promise them whatever they want. As a result, your child will disrespect you and begin to move further and further they're away from you. You might think you're doing the right thing by bringing up your children up with both parents, but, but I, I make, make it, it clear that, that you cannot, cannot bring, bring up children, children in the same, in the household, same household as, as a narcissist. narcissist. They will suffer, and so will you. It is up to you to protect your children. If your child does not fall for the hoovering or love bombing, they will suffer the same punishment as you. co-parenting with a narcissist. Admittedly, this will be one of the toughest challenges because we can't just go no contact in these scenarios like we normally would. We have to actually interact with them. So what is the solution? The solution is to go gray rock or least amount of contact necessary. Gray rock is when we keep things very calm and even keel, no reactions at all and we keep our interactions with the person that is a narcissist to logistics only. But the point is we don't give them any negative emotions to feed off of because they may try to provoke us, but we can't give them a reaction. Or 
they may try to hoover us back into some sort of romantic relationship, and we can't give them any hope in those scenarios either. Gray Rock, least amount of contact necessary, and keeping it business-like into logistics. That is the answer. If the father of your kids is a true narcissist, there's five things that he will do in every single argument, regardless of what it's about. The first one is, they will minimize your pain. It's not that big of a deal. You're overreacting. You're so fucking dramatic. The second thing they'll do is deflect away from the actual argument, such as bringing up old issues that have nothing to do with the current argument or projecting and accusing you of exactly what they're doing. The third thing is shifting blame on you. It's not my fault, it's yours. You're the reason this happened. This wouldn't have happened if it weren't for you. The fourth thing that these deadbeats will do in an argument is put you down. You're stupid. You're so fucking crazy. There's something wrong with you. How many times have you heard these? And the fifth thing, my favorite, is the they will gaslight you. I never said that. That never happened. That doesn't prove anything. Have you ever actually showed them what they did? Like literally showed them something and it's right in front of their face and they still denied it? Arguing with your narcissistic baby daddy is like trying to nail jello to the fucking wall. The main parent does not need to provide receipts or proof of what they've been spending their money on. Let me let that sink in. The main parent does not need to provide receipts or proof of what they've been spending their money on i'm just assuming this is the woman right because in the majority of cases it is your child's mother could have her nails on point hair on point the freshest new outfit fresh trainers gold teeth she could have she got gold teeth now you know what your child's mum has got gold teeth she's got a gold chain she's got a new tattoo like she's even driving a better car than you and you're looking at it like rare look how well she's doing like where's this money coming from what she's spending my money doesn't work like that it's as simple as like i said you are reimbursing this person every month for what they are having to pay out towards your child so just take a second look at your child if you look at your child and you realize my child's looked after you know my child's doing well my child's healthy my child's happy my child has everything they need my child's mom doesn't seem to ask for anything else but my child's mum is looking amazing on point she's got everything she's running her stuff there's there's nothing to complain about there's nothing your ego may say to you nah that's not fair 